One of the things that I always found difficult to understand as a medical student was how do you choose which type of IV fluid to use and in which scenario would you use it for? And in this video, I'm gonna show you my simple approach to IV fluids and, and when you would choose each type for each purpose. For more educational resources like our HP notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the different types of IV fluids and how they relate to the human body. Um, and then we'll also go over some sample scenarios as well. And I think the way to understand IV fluids and when you're going to be using each one is really to understand what comes in each of the IV fluid compositions. They're really only made of a few things. Each of them, especially the ones that are named, for example, sodium chloride is made out of sodium and chloride. Lactated ringers is a little bit more complicated. It's made of a lot of different things. And what you really are going to be doing is you're going to be looking at what's in it. So if you read the label, this is a sample label, it says exactly what's in it. It says there's potassium, there's chloride, there's calcium, um, there's lactate, and it also shows the osmolality. So it breaks it down exactly what is in each of these IV fluids. So you don't really have to remember any of this. You just reference what's on the bag itself. Um, I think, though, it is a good idea to have a general approach and then use this as a reference. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually look at what is the normal extracellular composition. So what does our blood actually look like? And then it's going to make sense why we're going to be using all these different fluids and for what purpose we're going to be using for them for. So I think the main thing that we have to keep note of is these three components. The three components that really make up why we use each of the different types of IV fluids is going to be the sodium, is going to be osmolality, and the pH. So just take note of what the normal sodium value, the normal osmolality, and the normal pH is. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is normal saline. And really, normal saline is only made out of two components. It's made out of sodium and chloride, which is salt. So it's made out of these two components, 154 milliequivalents per liter of sodium, as well as 154 milliequivalents of chloride. And the important part is that it's pretty close to our normal osmolality, which means it's isotonic. Uh, but the one thing that you have to note is that the pH is significantly less than the normal pH. It's 5.7. So when you're resuscitating somebody, it's a good resuscitation fluid. But the problem is when you resuscitate them too much, you're going to make them acidotic, right? If you keep giving them something that's very acidotic in their blood, it's going to just make it more like whatever that component is, which is makes it acidotic. And so that's going to be something that you have to consider when you're giving too much IV fluid, specifically when you're giving too much normal saline, you're going to want to consider giving another type of IV fluid. And we'll talk about that when we get Get there. The next thing I want to talk about is half normal saline. And from the name, and if you look at the percentage, it's exactly half. So if I were to think about this, I would think that everything would be half of the normal saline, exactly like the name is. And that's exactly how it works. So you see there's 77 milliequivalents of sodium, 77 chloride, and the osmolality is 154. pH is more or less similar to normal saline. So same problem, going to be acidotic as well. The osmolality is going to be less, and so you're going to have to take that in consideration when you're giving somebody this type of fluid. So the couple of uses that, that you can think of this for half normal saline is going to be in treating hypernatremia. If you think about it, if somebody has a sodium of 150, if you were to give them normal saline, well, that's just going to make their sodium even worse. So you're going to want to give them something that has less sodium, and that's going to be one of them, at least, that you can use is half normal saline. It's a much more complicated picture of why we choose the different types of fluids for each of the different diseases, but I at least want to give you a general approach to make sense of why we are able to use half normal saline for something like hypernatremia. The next thing is going to be D5W, and this is literally just sugar water, right? This is sugar water. If you see the components, the only thing that it's made out of is glucose, and its osmolality is a little bit less. It's a little bit hypotonic in comparison to our extracellular fluid, and the pH is still acidic. So all it really is is sugar, sugar water. And again, we see that one of its uses is for hypernatremia. And the reason why is because it, it doesn't have any sodium, right? It doesn't have any sodium. So just like half normal saline, it makes sense that we can use this for the treatment of hypernatremia. The next thing that we're going to be thinking about is going to be D5 half normal saline. And this is essentially D5W 
plus half normal saline. If we see, we just combine the two, right? We combine, we now have 77 milliequivalents of sodium, 77 milliequivalents of chloride, and glucose of 50, which is just these two combined into one liter of fluid. We see that the osmolality is significantly more hypertonic than our extracellular fluid, but it's also still acidic. One use for this is going to be in maintenance fluids. This is the one fluid that we oftentimes use as maintenance fluids because if you think about it, what does maintenance fluid actually mean? Well, maintenance fluid is the fluid that you need to keep your body functioning. For example, if somebody were to go into surgery, we need them to be on maintenance fluids or if they were MPO for whatever reason, if they had some type of bowel obstruction and they need to be MPO, they're going to probably be on this fluid, on D5 half normal saline, because it has the glucose that they'll need for their maintenance. Remember maintenance, what do you need to just be maintained is you're gonna need at least some sugar, and then you're also gonna need some other of the electrolytes. And so that's why we're gonna be using a little bit of sodium and a little bit of sugar uh, to keep them on maintenance fluid. So you can think of D5 half normal saline as a good maintenance fluid. Next thing that we're going to be dealing with is lactated ringers. And this is a very common fluid that we're going to be using in the OR. It's very common in the OR. We'll see that it's actually fairly similar to plasmolite, but I've personally seen LR being used in the OR much more so um, than plasmolite, and plasmolite much more so on the floor than LR. And I think that just all depends on the practice as well. But let's take a look at what exactly goes into LR. And I think it'll make sense of why this is a good fluid for the OR. So it actually kind of contains everything except glucose. We see that there's some sodium, there's some potassium, which is very similar to our actual extracellular uh, volume, and also calcium, which is at least the closest in adding some type of calcium to our normal fluid. We also see that there's chloride that's very similar, bicarb that's similar. There is lactate, which is not something that we necessarily have or want in our body it does contain that and the osmolality is very similar to our blood osmolality our extracellular volume and the ph as well is fairly closer or at least the closest that it has been and so the reason why this is good is because we can give a lot of this remember i mentioned before when you give normal saline that you can make your body acidotic well, in the surgery, you really wouldn't want that to be the case. When, when you have a patient who is acidotic, there's a, a lot of complications that could occur. And also, it just makes the surgery more difficult. And it makes some of the healing different than you would normally have. So you definitely don't want to make someone acidotic. So in that scenario, you're going to want to give LR. You're going to want to give LR as a resuscitation fluid or a fluid that you can utilize in surgery. You can use it in very high volumes and not have that complication, at least, of having an acidosis. The one thing I want to mention is that with everything, especially when you're giving a lot of fluids, you're going to want to be giving a variety of fluids because different fluids are going to add different things. If you add too much of one thing, your numbers are going to get skewed more in that direction and you're going to want to balance it with other fluids that you can utilize. So you definitely are not only using one type of fluid in every single scenario, but you're using a variety of them, especially in these high volume resuscitation cases. And the last one that we're going to be talking about is plasma light. And I would say that this is probably the closest one to our actual body composition, at least in regards to kind of these first three components of sodium, potassium, and chloride. It's going to be the closest we, we can get to um, our actual blood volume, and as well as the osmolality and the pH. So you can see that plasma light would be a very good fluid if we want to have some type of isotonic fluid for resuscitation or something that we want to mimic our actual body, our extracellular fluid, we want to mimic that during resuscitation. So this would be a great fluid for that. And you can see that LR and plasma light are pretty similar. A lot of it's going to vary by the provider, going to vary by the, the institution, and you, you can see how they can be very interchangeable. And so that's kind of how we broke down all the different fluids. So let's see how we can use them in practice. So this is just a review. If we have some type of hypovolemic patient and we want to resuscitate them, what will we use? Remember I mentioned probably the one that you're most commonly going to see in the ER when, you're, when someone needs to be fluid resuscitated, they're going to get normal saline. That's because it's going to be the best fluid that you can start them out with. I would imagine it's probably pretty cheap if it's just sodium chloride. And if you're only giving a few liters, maybe one or two, maybe even three liters in a given time period, normal saline would be perfect. But once we start thinking of more higher volume is when we're going to start off at normal saline, but eventually switch over to one of these two guys, right? We're going to want to switch over them due to the risk of expansion 
acidosis. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's something that you can commonly be pimped on for what are the complications of giving too much normal saline? Well, it's acidosis. The next thing is going to be in a pre-procedure MPO patient. Remember the example that I gave before, if you have a patient who has some type of ileus or some type of obstruction that you want to just keep them MPO or they, they have a procedure and all they need is some maintenance fluid. Um, so what you're going to do is Typically, these patients are going to get D5 half normal saline. You want to give them their sugar that they need to just kind of keep their body running. Um, and it's something that you can potentially use for a good amount of time. I won't say forever, but you can use it as a good amount of time, at least giving them some sugar water to keep them uh, normalized. And it also has a little bit of electrolytes as well. So the next thing that we're going to be talking about is hyponatremia versus hypernatremia management. And I just want to preface this by saying that this is significantly oversimplified just because depending on whether or not it's acute or chronic uh, hyponatremia and whether or not how severe it is, is going to determine what you're actually going to be utilizing. But I just want to use this as an example for a uh, concept. And so remember in hyponatremia, if you correct sodium too fast, you're going to have uh, central pontine myelinosis. And in hypernatremia, you're going to have cerebral edema because essentially you're giving all this hypotonic fluid and the water is going to be sucked into the cells because they are now more hypertonic and they're going to absorb by osmosis and, and cause it to swell up. Essentially, all the brain cells will swell up and the exact opposite will happen with uh, central ponte myelinosis. And so if we go through this just as an exercise, if you have, let's say, a sugar of 120, right? And this is a, a severely hyponatremic patient. Well, if you gave them half normal saline, that's just going to make it worse. If you give them D5 water, that's just going to make it worse. D5 half is going to make it worse. Lactated ringers is maybe going to make it a little bit better, but really not that much. And same thing with plasma. What we're really looking for is something that's going to have a greater uh, sodium content than your normal, which should be in the 140s. And so we're going to typically use something like normal saline, but in reality, oftentimes you're going to be using something like hypertonic saline because you just want to correct it quicker and the rate is going to determine based on the acuity and whether or not it's acute or chronic and just how severe it is. But just suffice it to say that oftentimes you're going to be using hypertonic saline, which is 3% in comparison to the normal saline of 0.9%. But conceptually, it should make sense that you're going to have a lot more sodium content in this hypertonic saline and in normal saline, it's already above the amount that you would have in this hyponatremic patient. So you just want something that's going to be higher than normal. So that kind of makes sense for, for that scenario. The next one would be in hypernatremia management. So in this situation, you're going to want, let's say you have their sugar is like 150. Let's even make it higher. Let's say it's in the 160s. And we want to bring it down to the 140s. And this would be a pretty severe case. And so what you're going to want to do is you can imagine that you want to be able to use something that can bring it down. And, and in theory, any of these three could work. Um, in practice, pretty much D5W and half normal saline are going to be the ones that they use in practice. But you can imagine that theoretically all three of these uh, fluids could be utilized. And I just want to kind of put that concept home of, of why this all makes sense. And now, hopefully, just by looking at the different packaging, looking at this table and seeing what everything is made out of, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense of why we're utilizing different types of fluids in different situations. And obviously, probably the best resource is you're still going to always look these up, but at least you kind of have a framework of if you see this and you see somebody using lactated ringers or plasma light, you can kind of make sense of why are you using them and hopefully that helps a little bit. Be sure to check out our website medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our medical ID cards and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.